Hello everybody, welcome back to Cougar Talk Weekly with Cougar Is Bay. Today we have a couple of pretty awesome forum additions and uh, just some um, guild announcements that have been uh, put together in the last couple of days. So let's hop in and enjoy. First, this is a cool thing um, that Gerald Ironheart says, a bard companion. So, Gerald Ironheart says, a fun little idea I had the other day was I wish there was a companion we would get in game and not have to spend 50 bucks on them. There was a bard. And I don't mean a fighting bard, like Isabel Bastion, Mary Ember. I mean someone more like a banker, follower, but he or she just follows you and sings songs or plays instruments. Sort of like Dandelion slash Jackie from The Witcher. We could pick the song that plays and instruments as well. Or have a quest where we find new songs and instruments for them to play. That would we that would be fun. I enjoy the style of music and would love for some funny companion that sings and plays music to follow me or around to take you know notes of my deeds for songs. It could be very easily implemented in game as well. What do you guys think? Abu says, I would use a bard companion 100% of the time, honestly. If they were not annoying and put up some good songs and tales, plus a bard companion should have more dialogue lines than the ordinary ones. And uh, Gerald replies exactly, if they were not annoying, it would be the biggest thing in this. They are actual charming people, not some horny sex fiend. I'm looking at you, hi, I'll your carn. That's true. I mean, look at him, Like he, he's like with his shirt off and such in one of the dungeons. Ideally, I would want both a female and a male version, so everyone could have their own favorite with them. As long as they're not fighting version and I can place them on my house and they continue to sing and play instruments there, I'm all for it. And uh, then somebody like, started writing songs. If he sings as bad as the bard in Gonfalon, my main will probably strangle him within five minutes. If his voice is okay, it could be nice during longer travels. Um, and then the Gerald says, yeah, that bard is trash. I love the Jim Cunnings Bard Singers and the female Artmer and Eleanor near the Crafting Rit turn in. Those singers are good. Also, those Argonians jam out in Merkmeyer. So I really do like this context. Um, I really like the fact that um, the quest to unlock new songs, or even, you know, you can uh, tie the antiquities to it, like find a journal that has like a song or like a tale or something that the uh, Bard Companion could give you. That would be pretty freaking awesome. Um, I'm excited about that. You know, I would definitely like that aspect in the game. And it would add something cool for the role players uh, in the game to do. And, you know, if it's a housing item as well, like, that would create, you know, some some housing uh, nuts out there to, to get this. I mean, it's pretty interesting to have something like this. Um, I personally wouldn't like f be followed around with it all the time, but um, I do like the idea of this. This is a great idea. I don't know if they'll implement it anytime soon, but it's something that you know, Cinemax. If you're listening, this is this is pretty cool. It's in their forum, so um, they probably have looked at it. So there you go, Kevin Fear. Here you go. Like, there's something cool you can do. And, I mean, if it doesn't take that much coding, um, that would be nice. The only thing is, like, they're going to have to hire somebody to, like, sing the songs and tell the tales and such. So, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, but if they have somebody that can do that already working for them, then this might be actually be, like, an achievable thing. So, there we go. Speaking of companions, Swook 33B16 ESO. Yo, Cinemax, can we please get the option to unlock the companions without having to go through their story for every character we have? If we already done in the unlocking achievement on one character, we don't gain anything new going through the same story over and over. Like, you can have the same that in the collection window we click on the companion select and get the quest normally. We click it again and ask if we want to unlock this companion right away. So no more running around, you know, the quest to unlock the companions. Um, okay, if you insist. So, the one thing that I really like that kind of goes around this already is if you've done the Tales of Tribute quest, if you have uh, the whole thing already, if you go into a new character that has not done that, you go talk to, um, I think, Bragas out there in Gonfalon Bay, and he says, hey, you know, go inside, 
You talk to the dude, and then the dude automatically gives you all the stuff. So that would be cool to have. Um, I'm not. I would still. It would still be a good idea to go where the quest is, and have like Mary talk to you, and then have that unlock option. So, I would still, you know, yeah, no more running around the same quest, but I would still have it to where you have to go with that character to the quest where the quest starts to unlock the companion. Um, Tander says, too many things are account-wide already. I hope they're resistant and calls for more things to be made that way. The game doesn't need any more dumbing down. Um, Ragnarok says, the OP wants an option. There's nothing wrong with options to remove tedious systems for those who wish to use them, which is hardly dumbing down the game. I agree. So it should be given in an option. So once you go over there, you can say, hey, I would like to unlock. It gives you two options, or you can go ahead and go with the quest. So it doesn't take away from the game for others who would want to go through the same quest again. But it also gives the people that are like, okay, I already did this. You know, let me just unlock it. Um, I do think the rapport, um, maybe not the level of the character, but the rapport with that character should be different with each unlocked thing um which each unlock character because it's a different character you're unlocking that companion with so if you have a sork that you unlock mary with for example and then you go on your dragon knight you go over there unlock it i think you should still be able to unlock that character she's maxed out blah 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 but i still think that the rapport should be you know right there like it should be different it should be like where it starts in the beginning that way you still have to build rapport with her um and still have to do like quests and such to 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 gain with that um i personally think that's the best way to do it but a lot of people say oh it's too grindy well if it's too grindy then have it to where it starts like halfway through the rapport then and then you know you still have a little bit of grinding but not as much as uh, before and then Tander says, people always say they want things to be optional, but they usually don't end up that way. Account-wide achievements being a case in point. Account-wide achievements were not made to be optional. Um, that's the thing. Like, you could still go and get the achievement with another character. It's just you already have it. Like, come on now. Like, I've cleared VCR with new characters before, and I already have my skin and all that crap. But, like, I still know that I cleared it with that. And I'm one of those people that I will not wear a title on my tune that I didn't earn. So if my tune is not a bringer of light, if he didn't complete VCR plus three, you better believe I'm not wearing that bringer of light title on that tune. Um, same, you know, with Dawnbringer, Godslayer, any of those big titles out there, you better believe it. If that character did not complete that, I am not putting that title on that character. I'm just, that's just me. The skins are different, but the titles, they actually mean something in the game to me. Um, other people are like that with skins, but it's titles. That's mine. That guy did not earn that title, so you better believe that title's not there. That's why my tank has a volunteer title on it. <laughs> like, he earned that title, so might as well. Uh, Necrotech Master says, the companion locks are technically account-wide. It's just that extra caveat of requiring the Dawn Quest on every character in order to actually summon them. That requirement has been annoying me since the original Blackwood and just adds to the laundry list of stuff you have to do with a new character to get them up to speed with other characters. I agree. Like I said, I really do like the fact that we, you know, if we could get something to where there is an option to unlock the companion going through the quest since you already did them, then you should have it. Um, I, I still think the rapport should be either at the beginning or halfway with each new character because i still think you need to do some sort of work in there um to you know kind of go with the companion aspect because that companion technically did not meet your dragon knight but it met your sword kind of like that but i do like this um swook 33b16 uh underscore eso now x strong over here the next uh says hey mythic item for extra loot when farming mats 
a mythic item or a set that gives you extra loot when harvesting nodes in overland zones. So basically a mythic that every bod farmer in ESO would use now. Um, and then how loud Ning says, um, cause I knew somebody would say this, bots don't usually get DLCs. Do I agree? This is a bad idea. Champion bonus is enough. I think crafting surveys and double loot notes events help also save its blood again. Outland Ranger, I don't want to keep fishing so much, so much long time in the fishing hole for such a nonsense gear. Varani Sereno uh, says, there was a harvesting mythic item considered at one point. However, I haven't checked in a long while to see if the CP passive that double rolls on the node is working right. It's supposed to be 50%, but it used to only be 40%. And X Strong says, people using bots to farm don't need to answer. Why would it be a bad thing to let that player spend a lot of time farming and get a little extra with a mythic? I don't think many bots will buy DLCs and level skills lines for a mythic like this. And Tom of Hyrule says, I remember when this exact mythic was accidentally dropped in the sticker book. There was definitely a bit of outrage when it was found to be unplanned and was removed. I could go either way, but I'm not going to assume that some people wouldn't play their alt accounts long enough to get it and then set them up to farm though. If that's what's going on, I've noticed that it seems to proc way less than it used to, but I never did any testing beyond this. Um, here's my, I'm kind of 50-50 like this. These guys are pretty 50-50. Um, there are some advantages to getting this and there's some disadvantages. I really do think that there are people out there that would take advantage of this mythic and find some crazy loophole and just mess it up for everybody. I don't think the bots are going to be using this. First of all, you have to, um, if they're going to make something like this, you better believe Cinemax is going to make that mythic item like a gold lead. So you have to get the gold lead and you have to already like on that account, you literally have to have the digging at like the not max level but pretty close to it do you think that bot farmers are going to be doing that hell no they're not going to be doing that they're <laughs> that's a waste of money in my opinion if you are thinking the way they think that is a huge waste of money why spend time doing that uh when they're gonna get probably banned like a couple of days day or two later after you know they they get all that stuff they'll get banned like why go through that trouble why go through that work when the mythic item is they're not it's not gonna be if it happens it's not gonna be like some ridiculous amount okay it's not gonna be like open soul so um while i'm all for it i'm still like hesitant because i feel like somebody will depending on how the percentages and such somebody will make a big thing with it and it, it'll just i don't know i think i think it's it's 50 50 on my end i like i like the idea but if it's implemented correctly then um you know those people are saying hey bot farmers no they're not gonna waste time doing this so you guys can chill about that and then saucy jack says can we have a mythic or even some sort of consumable that ups pickpocket chances now this i can get behind I know there's already a green perk that affects pickpocketing, but when you're dealing with pickpocketing nobles and other high difficulty targets, the success percentages are essentially a crapshoot. Thoughts? And then Necrotech Master um, says, maybe add force lock to that too. Although that is a weird one, I failed forcing a simple lock 12 times in a row at 85% chance, but I succeed in forcing the master lock a 60% chance in one try, lol. And Hapisem Mendia says, don't think it's necessary myself. The Ledger Man skill line isn't that hard to level up and maxed out, and it will give you reasonable chances at pickpocketing nobles. RPA says, at low Ledger Man, the actual, the actual pickpocketing changes, changes appear smaller than the percentage shown. Real or not, I don't pickpocket before having a point or more in light fingers. It's just too frustrating. Also, lag can mess the window of opportunity indication, so one can fail at 100%. Prime time is not a good time for pickpocketing. Oh, there's Katana Girl. Hell yeah. I know she does some, some of this. 
Roll a Khajiit. I don't even bother with CP slaughterables, but pickpocketing is not my favorite activity. At least I can evade the guards if I fail. Ha ha ha. Hell yeah. This is what I'm talking about. So Katana Girls, one of our guildies, gets in here to roll a Khajiit. I mean, it's true. Just go roll a Khajiit. They're fast as fuck. <laughs> um, I do like the mythic idea. Um, I still think it shouldn't be like too crazy um maybe at like a 10 and 15 percent chance to pickpocketing um and to be honest i really do think the ledger main line should get a rework just in general um there's just too much stuff out there right now you know with pickpocketing that that you know it, it needs it a little bit that line needs a little bit of love so I do like the mythic idea. Um, the force lock, you know, maybe that could be something that they rework the ledger main line. I would be okay if they rework the ledger main line to add something like this instead of a mythic. Um, that is something, you know, doable. Um, and maybe add it to where they add five extra levels to the ledger main. And they rework the line to where you have to level up those five levels because they added stuff. Um, so that's that's a good idea. I like it either way. Um, I think a mythic would be nice. But if they rework the line and kind of add a little bit of grinding in there for it, I think it might just be a little bit better. But um, I'm okay. Either way, I'm okay with... with a mythic or just the rework. I, I'd rather have the rework, but I'm I'm okay on that. So, so Silent Verse says, besides being more difficult, do you know what ESO is really lacking? Immersion and a sense of adventure. Let me explain. What made old school MMORPGs was a great sense that you and our party of friends were surviving out in a huge unknown world of danger and mystery. Look at WoW, for example. There was no fast travel instantly at your fingertips. There was no dungeon finder. There were world bosses roaming around that would shoot you. Party quest. My point is that it's missing completely from ESO and all modern MMOs. There is no sensors of emergence in the open world. There is no sense of adventure or very little because you can just fast travel from one quest to the nearest town in an instant. Um... I believe you still have to go and find the way shrines to fast travel. So there is a little bit of a quest of adventure to do so. And you have to do it with every single character, which is probably a good idea that the developers left that the same. Um, now regarding difficulty, there are more ways. And to be honest, I think they're gonna be addressing this and the next um i think they're gonna be adding difficulty to the game like um vet and non-vet so you know yeah i get it um i still want a reward system yes please give us a better reward system like the the funniest part is i was playing tales of tribute um about two weeks ago to get to the leaderboard to get to the top 10 percent and the loot boxes that you get for each win in my opinion were a lot better than that last loot box that you get at the end like what kind of crap is that like that loot box at the end if you're in the top 10 percent or the top two percent i think that needs to be reworked because you should be able to get like a guaranteed banner or something or again like a guaranteed banner guaranteed style page and something else uh along with what is there right now like it's shit it's shit compared to the rest of the of the things that you're getting grinding your way up um if the banners are added to the end uh result they should um not take away a lot of the drop rate for the regular coffers but scale it back just a tiny bit i'm talking about maybe one to two percent less of a chance to drop in those regular coffers that way they still are um a little bit harder to find but 
you are kind of rewarded for being in the top 10% because that reward system is shit. So if anything that ESO can be lacking is the reward system. Um, this other stuff, this is just somebody bitching and moaning. So, <laughs> and this guy says expected auction house. Come on, guys. No. Uh, Verona says we used to have something sort of like that. Someone's got more difficult as you travel through them and taking the wrong turn could land you in hot water with enemies much higher level than you. I know. I remember this shit. I remember going into Stormhaven um, and <laughs> at the level that I shouldn't have and I got killed over and over again. And I'm like, oh shit, I'm not supposed to be here. So like, yeah, I guess. But here's the thing. The reason they took that away when they made one Tamriel is because the people were like, well, we want to explore all the zones and we want to be able to enjoy the game, you know, at the from the very get-go. Um, so I really do think they're going to add the difficulty to the zones. But um, I don't know. It, it, it really depends. Um, and this guy says, Varane, he says, we used to have something like that. Problem is that wasn't very popular and Sauce eventually did away with that and won Tamriel, like I said. ESO got a lot more popular since then. The thing is, ESO is an Elder Scrolls game. It draws in a lot of players from Skyrim, Oblivion, Morrowind, and the rest. It's neither a pure single RPG nor a pure MMORPG, but a blend of both. Exactly! Um, so it doesn't satisfy the players in between. Those sort of multiplayer survival mechanics aren't past of the Elder Scrolls games outside the modern scene. Maybe the, ed, the devs will add them, but in the meantime, I suggest looking for the opportunities to engage meaningfully with other players. I came to ESO from Skyrim and wanted to play it like Skyrim with in real life friends for the longest time. Some of the things that help me connect with online strangers is joining a friendly guild, plugging in PvP. How I eventually found my PvP guild. Saying hi in a random dungeon chat. Offering world boss dailies in zone chat, organizing groups for the plus content and cragmon like spell scar, starting an impromptu dance party set for oh my god. But yeah, it's true. Like, do this stuff. I mean, there's people out there that are super super friendly. Hell, my guild is super super friendly. The other day somebody asked for shimmering sand in my guild, and I was like, hey, how many you need? They said five. Shimmering sands are like 2k a pop. Guess what? That's 10k. And I was I was not hurting for that 10k. I sent that guildie those five freaking shimmering sands. They were trying to build something for their house, I'm sure. And there you go. I mean, or even if they're trying to build a cool looking armor with shimmering sands, who the freak cares? Just <laughs> the point of the game is is so much different from what you're trying to do. So, I don't know. This guy is crazy. There's better things that ESO can be concentrating on. So, the next companion. Consider adding an Imperial companion. I can get behind this. This is actually a pretty good one. Um, it must be both race Imperial and form a Legionnaire member. Please, but please do this. Imperials are the less focused thing in the game. And we deserve some love, too. Like, he or she was defending the Imperial City Tower during the Daedra invasion, and as time passes, they had nowhere to go since their home was were destroyed, their friends defeated during the defense of the city, so they stayed in Cyrodiil alone. However, when the Three Banner War started, they went from city to city to stay safe. They found a player near the Old Emperor's Dungeon Cave, and they wanted to stick around and want to be loyal friends because they lost everything and want to stay alive with somebody. I agree, this is awesome, this is a great idea, I love it. Can we get this? It could be, uh, um, this was Delta 464X, D. Mul Mulhausen says it could be but one of the two, assuming the at least two new companions will be the race that the chapter is focused on. The other could maybe be Imperial, but most likely won't be. For most people, Imperials just aren't interested. <laughs> oh, God. I don't care what race it is, but just hope they're both as interesting as Ember. Dude. 
Ember has made me want to like laugh so hard. So I personally hate the companion system, but at least Ember doesn't make me want to rage quit over terrible dialogue. <laughs> I mean, I love Ember. Like that's the best thing. And Ragnarok says, Bastion's an Imperial, and as such, I put him in Imperial armor, but your idea about being a former Legionnaire would be great. A companion similar to Titus Valerius would be most welcome. I'm a long-time Imperial enjoyer with many of my tunes Imperial, so I understand your request. But I do think we need some sort of different type of, cons of companion, such as a vampire who doesn't mind Dark Brotherhood missions and the likes. See, this would be interesting too. What about, you know, an Imperial that maybe, like, when they were going from, like, hood to hood, they they got vampire bitten, and they're a vampire now, and they're like, oh, screw this, you know, this world sucks, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna join Dark Brotherhood or some crap like that. That would be some crazy twist to the game, but, uh, I mean, I don't think they're gonna do it. Um... <laughs> And not a dater worshipper says, as much as I like Bastion, I'm very annoyed that they made him Imperial. He was bred at first, then for some reason they decided to change him into Imperial at the last second. Despite being born in High Rock, and everything about him is Breton. <laughs> I thought he was a Breton too, because <laughs> like, wow. I didn't know he was an Imperial until now. Sure, all races can be found being born and growing up in all of Tamriel's provinces, but when companions are as limited as they are, with max of two being released a year, they should make the first one of the race that fits the original culture, and then there, when there's more than they can get experimental. Because right now, we technically have two bread companions and are unlikely to get an imperial one from Cyrodiil, in many years, something, some, uh, something, something, sauces terrible treatment. Something. <laughs> oh my god, this is great! I love it. <laughs> we are likely to get two of the missing races next, such as Bosmer and Argonia. Argonia would be nice. Um, Orc, Redguard, or Altmer, who also are hopefully her male. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> um. I would like an Argonian one. I think that would be super cool. Um, so that, I mean, if I had to pick, I really do like the, um, this. And, I mean, maybe something like this. Or, um, where, where's the, the, the vampire thing? I would be okay with those. Those are pretty good. <laughs> next next deal if sauce were to overhaul one aspect of the game what would it be arch mickham says personally a simple character animation overhaul would change the game feel tremendously give the player weight and momentum have transition animations like a slowing to a stop from running sprint Ooh, this is actually pretty good smooth directional okay so more of a visual like more realistic yeah that that actually would be cool um castor says it said more race class specific dialogues and maybe some random encounters that differ based on this as well It'd be nice to have more characters recognize you for a specific skill set you have and have the world do the same i like that too so like if you were a breton you know and some other race that hated you or whatnot you did something bad, who knows? Then have you recognized that? So that's pretty cool. Uh, Cargan27 says, Not really an overhaul, but, but I would like more choices in quests and dialogue that relate to what we have accomplished. It was kind of cool to be able to say, Hey, I'm an expert in alchemy, and go to that direction with a quest. More of that I would enjoy. Kind of along the line if it's a really wide line. Maybe have some NPCs do side quests we've helped in the past. Ask for our help again would give a reason to return to some zones we might not have visited for a while. I do like this, and they were talking about, like, revisiting zones. There's been leaks about that, but which makes me think they're going to do a veteran um, thing of the zones. But actually, this would be awesome, too. All these, like, so far have been good. Um, well, the entire engine could use some serious help. But I also like to see better animations and physics. So the guy 
I can't stand them in the game. Walking, running, sneaking. So it's basically the same with this guy. That's that's uh, pretty much the same thing. Fizilu. And Drorak says, character creation. Better and more options so we can have more varied player characters. Yeah, um... I mean, the character creation is pretty in-depth. So, I don't know what you can put in there. I mean, yeah... I think they're saving that for the next game. City Sidonia Sino yeah, says... After four years, I jumped in my Thief Assassin 2 and I went to use Bane to see why I hated it so much. Sneak! What a complete pile of crud. Sneak up to the door, character stands up to go through and get spotted. Sneak up to the quest item, character stands up and gets spotted. <laughs> yeah, so fix Sneak, basically. Questing difficulty, I, I really do think this is coming, folks. I'm telling you, like... A lot of people have been asking this, and I think that's one of the features that they're talking about. Trading. The fixation on having to join a player control guild feels misplaced, makes a basic part of MMO functionality convoluted, and is off-putting to many, many people. No, please, no, we're not gonna have an option house. No, be quiet. Um, no, no. It's gonna kill the economy, guys. Like, it will kill the economy. Like, if you get rid of guilds altogether, you're gonna kill the game. Like, if you put an auction house, you're gonna kill the game. If I could choose one thing, it would be make all aspects of Overland two, three times harder. Again, I think this is coming. Forum Bully says, healing. Investing in healing shouldn't be the same as investing in damage. Yes, I know there's set CP and difference, but I've, if you got good damage, you've got good healing. And this makes the traditional healer role less useful and less necessary, especially in PvP. It's a leading factor in the recurring tanky metas, and it's and until it's really dealt with, that won't change. Here's the problem with PvP. The problem with PvP is that the skill the skills and such are different because people it's the same for PvE and PvP. If you could break that barrier and just have like, let's say jabs do this in PvP and then do this in PvP, PvE. Yes, it would be a headache, guys. I know, like, I could see it being a huge headache. Because one, you know, a bug might happen and, hey, jabs is doing um, this in PvP where, you know, this is the number that it should be doing in PvE because it's much higher and it creates that. I get it, but at the end, guys, it's going to be a little bit better, okay? It will be a little bit better. Um, Tannis says upgrade the entire thing to Unreal Engine 5. I mean, that's, that's good. Um, Tommy the Gun says simple solution would be to also allow for trading guild NPCs to buy stuff from other players. Similarly to how you post items you want to sell. You would post items you want to buy for how much. Everyone visiting trading guild NPCs will be able to sell you items you want and as long as they have it in their inventories. That way, pretty much every player, to some extent, could participate in ESO Global and Trading. I mean, this is pretty much kind of like an auction house in reverse. Um, but it also would take away from the chat in Zone that says, hey, wanting to buy this. So, I mean, I, I like this idea. Depending on how they implement it, that would be pretty easy. I mean, lots of stuff, but everyone over us some more options for character creations. I mean, I think it's fine. Ah, uh, we're not gonna do trading. Um, it's an idea that's been discussed before, but the trouble is I'm not clear why anyone would bother, bother to post wanted to buy listings. In practice, I doubt it would provide a sensible alternative. Even though the idea is nice, the trading system alienates people who simply want to be able to sell it and don't want it gated by the actions of other players. In that context, the game needs a straightforward non-player controlled selling mechanic. The most straightforward way to do that, that doesn't kill Sauce. I've been playing this game since, okay, I guess nothing. <laughs> what? I've been playing this game since 1865 and nothing should ever change because I do it this way type players. Sacred cows that seem to be set, what? I, okay. I don't know. That that's that 
they lost me like they lost me here this this whole thing i i, I got lost <laughs> i don't know but anyways so if i were to change something in the game um, I do like this guy's Arch Mickham, the animation, the character animations do need a little bit of an overhaul. The Unreal Engine, um, would be something cool to see. Um, I would want the development team to see how it could affect the game before they totally implemented. But, um, or give us, you know, a chance to see it in PTS or something like that. But I do like this character animation overhaul. I um I think it's it's about time that this happens. It would make the game feel more realistic. So there you go. I mean that's that's pretty much what um what I think over here. Make sure you guys um you know a couple of guild announcements here. Support the Kugi Nation. We have um, a Discord uh, way that you can donate to the cause, and we have Patreon as well. The Discord way is linked in our guild chat pin message. So if you have Discord, then you can see it in the pin messages under guild chat. And there is a link there for you to donate. If you do not have money, folks, please don't do it. I don't want to take somebody's money that they were going to use for food. Um, all that money is going to the guild to get like better, um, better Discord just to support the guild as a whole um it would create you know better price supports uh we could give away more crown crates like all that money goes to back to the guild basically so if you could help us out with the patreon and such then that would be great um make sure you guys check out our monday night schedule monday night madness is happening and 123 is going to be hide and kill 130 is going to be Western Skyrim Labyrinthian. 216, Craglorn Sky Shards and Zone. 220, uh, Tales of Tribute Card Tournament. And then 227, we're going to have Fight Club with Fist only. Make sure you guys participate with us each Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you have any questions, please contact Dona Raptor or Mrs. Fiddlepont and Scoring Music 09. Now, <clears throat> We gave a little bit of a Kugi shout out to Katana Girl uh, for most improved Kugi in the guild this month. And I'm going to keep giving it away at these Kugi talks for the rest of the month. Uh, so thank you, Katana Girl. You are awesome. You are definitely the most improved. You took a chance. You took a leap of faith. And you believed in our Turbo Team leaders. And um, you are absolutely reaping the rewards for it. As always, we would like to thank the Cougar City Boosters, Boss Style, Cougars Bay, Score Music 09, X Reading X, and Merc 271. Again, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe our channel and YouTube. It would really mean a lot to us to, to have that. And make sure you guys check our new website, CougarCityGaming.com. Also, the uh, Cougar City Housing Contest winners were Donut Raptor, Mac Pickle, and Nature Woman. Make sure you guys um, do know that that would be uh, a pretty awesome thing. You know, they did. Check those houses out if they're still available and such. Now, the newest thing that we have this week is we are going to start normal trial weekends. Saturdays and Sundays at 4 p.m. Eastern. You can contact Hades or Avery on Discord for more information. But all you got to do is sign up through our Discord, which you can find in our message of the day in the guild. And it's under the Cougar Raiders tab. Everybody is welcome, no matter the CP or experience. So if you don't know what you're doing and you want to have some gear farm and have a cool, awesome way to learn the mechanics of you know just the end game community how they started then this is the perfect way for you to jump in and have a cool experience with the guildies now like i said you don't have to have any experience your cp you know it doesn't matter um we will just kind of welcome you in with open arms kind of get you to know the mechanics it's normal trials folks so it's gonna be very easy Compared to, you know, the the big end game 
that uh that you know the chill team for example is experiencing now if you want to chill out with the peeps this is the perfect way to do it in the weekends unfortunately turbo team um which has gone past this particular spot um you know the, the normal trial weekend people are starting they are full on subs and in their um in their team but that doesn't mean that there won't be openings in the future same with chill team we do have opening spots in the future so please make sure that uh you check that out and you know we also have weekly traders we're donation based the monday night events we have beginner and advanced prog teams like i just said to you guys pvp nights every once in a while and we have tales tribute tournament coming up in monday night madness so thank you guys for watching you're awesome make sure you guys like and subscribe to our channel it will really mean a lot to us and share this information with your guildies we have mcpickle blasting all that and hit our discord folks we do a lot of giveaways that are just discord based as well thank you guys have fun and happy saturday